No point beating about the bush. It's been a disappointing final day of the transfer window. None of the big four have moved for any players. Frank Ribery hasn't gone. More about that later. And although lots of clubs have done deals on this final day, lots of clubs failing to get their men as well. Here's a look at the winners and the losers on the final day of the window. Spurs are winners have managed to pull off a great deal to get Nico Cranchar in to replace the injured Luka Modric, but they've failed to get David Bentley out of the door to Manchester City. They wanted to do a cash deal to get all of the money they paid for him back. City wanted to do a loan deal and the move broke down. They also failed with a move for the City winger Martin Petrov. And they also wanted to get defender Anton Ferdinand back from Sunderland with right back Alan Hutton going the other way. But Sunderland would not let that happen. Spurs also made an inquiry for the West Ham defender Matthew Upson, but nothing was done there. Stoke were winners. They managed to sign Danny Collins from Sunderland, but West Ham were losers. They failed in their bid to sign the Bordeaux striker Marouane Schemach. To be fair, Bordeaux themselves are losers as they were too greedy with their asking price for a player at a contract next summer. And now he will leave for nothing. He's free to talk to other clubs from January and Arsenal are now the red-hot favourites to get him on a Bosman. Aston Villa, they've signed Richard Dunn from Man City and I'd consider them to be a winner. Stuart Downing, maybe he won't play for a while, he's still injured, but Warnock from Blackburn's a good player as he can play in defence as well as midfield. Also James Collins and Richard Dunn will bolster their defence along with Habi Bay and Fabian Delph is one for the future. Hamoe Boatza, the former Watford striker, is a winner. He was a free agent after walking out on a Turkish club just a week ago, but now he's moved to Blackburn. I'd say Everton are winners as well, even though they couldn't quite pull off their move for the Valencia midfielder Eva Benigia. They have got two defenders in and those two defenders are indeed quality to replace Jolie and Lesker in the shape of Sylvan Diston from Portsmouth and Johnny Heitinger from Atletico Madrid. They've given him a five-year deal. He cost £6 million. And I also like the winger Billy Aletdinov from Lokomotiv Moscow. He cost around £9 million and he's a top player. Portsmouth, however, are the day's big gamblers. They lost around £35 million worth of talent with Cranshaw going to Spurs today, but they signed Watford central defender Mike Williamson, Tel Benheim from Man City and the 25-year-old French midfielder Hassan Yebda on loan from Benfica. In a way, you could say that they are winners in that they've kept David James away from Spurs, but will he now be motivated after being prevented his move? In total, Portsmouth have signed nine players in this window with the likes of Finnan, Makawena, Boateng, Smith and Dindan going to the south coast. They would have brought in Aston Villa's fullback Nicky Shorey, but he couldn't agree terms. And yes, they will be relegated. The former Portsmouth striker David Nugent is a winner, well kind of. He will get some regular first team football before being relegated with Burnley. So to a hull, they managed to get a couple of strikers in last week. And now they've brought in a couple of big men, Abdullah Faye from Bolton and Ibrahim Sonko from Stoke. Bolton are winners. They've pulled off a coup by signing the Croatian striker Ivan Klasnic on loan. We told you about that this morning after his former club Nantes were relegated last season. And Fulham are winners. They've signed long-term target David Elm from Kalmar FC. He's a midfielder. They've also managed to keep Brit defender Britta Hangeland away from Arsenal. Other selected winners, losers and gamblers include Man United. No big signing for them with Ronaldo gone. And I think they're gambling going into the season with the hopes of their fans resting on the shoulders of the likes of Mikado Welbeck, Valencia and Owen. Chelsea too are gamblers. They've got a fantastic squad. But if Drogba goes to the African Nations Cup and Anelka gets injured in January, then is Danny Sturridge good enough to lean the line for them? Arsenal are gamblers. They haven't had a great, well, they have had a great start to the season, but they haven't signed anyone. They needed a defensive midfielder and another centre half, but they haven't signed anyone on this deadline day. I know lots of you asking too about Liverpool. They haven't signed anyone on this deadline day. The big winners are Man City. They got their men in Lescott, Torre, Adebayor, Barry, and Tevez. Spurs say it's speculation, but we know that Tottenham tried to get a few more Bob out of City for David Bentley, but they've stood their ground and they've got a squad now capable of breaking into the top four. North of the border, Rangers have signed left winger Jerome Rothen from PSG, their first signing for 13 months. Further afield, Ajax have signed Inter Milan's Brazilian midfielder Kurlot and the Serbian forward Marco Pantelic. And yes, the Frank Ribery competition to win the total 90 shoot two boots remains unresolved. He hasn't gone. We will do a new competition on MFTV, so stay tuned for that. 
but back in the Premier League and it's been a quiet end to another cracking summer transfer window. If you're wondering about free transfers, well, if they have left their club before the deadline, then they can actually get fixed up afterwards. Don't forget, too, you can get details of all of today's comings and goings on our live blog at mirrorfootball.co.uk and also on the news section of the same site, so make sure you tune in. Unlike other transfer windows, though, we're not leaving you. Football Spy may have ended, but MFTV will begin from tomorrow. The Mirror Sport presenting team will have paper reviews, previews of the weekend sport, and reviews on a Monday with interviews involving the top Premier League managers. So we won't quite be saying goodbye, but we are thanking you for sticking with us with, for what has been another enjoyable summer of Football Spy. I'll see you next time.